Hey guys, today we're gonna be talking about another play to earn game that is launching soon. Their NFTs will be minting on February 25th, and a demo is scheduled to be released in Q2 of 2022. This game is Guild Saga. Guild Saga is an NFT-based fantasy RPG built on the Solana blockchain. In Guild Saga, players can use their fully customizable heroes to fight with computer-controlled enemies in a single-player story mode. Or they can even try their skill against other players in PvP. All of this while also having the chance to earn rewards. My first impressions of the game are great. As you may have noticed, I am a big fan of pixel art. And the graphics that Guild Saga uses look really good. It really feels like each character was given a lot of time to design to help make each one look unique. The gameplay is inspired by other isometric perspective strategy games that are also turn-based. So if you've played games like Final Fantasy Tactics or Tactics Ogre, then this won't be new to you. I'm also a big fan of games like these since I grew up with the Final Fantasy franchise, which makes fantasy RPGs hit a different spot for me. Let's see what Guild Saga has to offer. To get started with the game, you don't need to buy anything. Yes, the game is free to play for everyone. This is another crypto game following the trend of being free to play for faster mass adoption. But if you do want to buy a Guild Hero NFT, it will come with certain benefits similar to other crypto games that have a free to play system. Each Guild Hero NFT comes with 18 attributes that help make each one unique. As you can see, these are a lot of traits, similar to a body part system in other crypto games. The items that a Guild Hero NFT have also have their own rarity levels like the hand, finger, weapons, trinkets, and clothing. The rarity of the item is represented by the background color it has. They can either be common, uncommon, rare, epic, legendary, ancient, or unique. And each Guild Hero NFT also has an overall rarity level, which is indicated by the design of their border. The rarities are bronze, silver, gold, arcane, and elven. The rarity also changes the UI design of the NFT. These are the traits of a Guild Hero NFT if ever you want to buy one for yourself, but they are not required to play the game. Like I mentioned earlier though, they do give certain perks to the owners. Owners can import their Guild Hero NFT into the game, including all the equipment and attributes they have. When using an NFT hero, they also get increased earning rate when playing the game. Before the main launch, holders can also send their NFTs on quests with a chance to earn rewards and other NFT items. This is the game's version of staking. Holders also get early game advantages because some content and side quests will only be doable with higher level equipment. And they can show off exclusive titles given to holders in PvP mode. As you can see, there are a lot of benefits if you do own an NFT, since it is a reward for supporters of the project. And along with all these perks, don't forget you're also getting a sick looking pixel art that shows your hero and its attributes. For a pixel art lover like me, the art alone is worth the price. If you are liking this character design so far, you can check out their website and white paper to learn more. They recently announced the mint date for Guild Hero NFTs, which is happening on February 25th. If you want to get NFTs of your own, keep your eyes peeled for that. We made this video ahead of the mint date so you can have an overview of the project and maybe help you decide if you want to invest in it or not. But remember, whenever it involves real money, please do your own research and be diligent enough. If you want to stay updated about other upcoming crypto game launches, you can join our Discord over at Survivors, where we have a daily newsletter that keeps our members up to date about everything play to earn. Now let's get to the gameplay. Like I said before, the game is free to play for everyone. So before starting the game, players will have to create and customize a character first. There are many character customizations available, and if you have a Guild Hero NFT, you can also import them directly. Let me explain the characteristics each hero has first, regardless if they are NFTs or not. Heroes have combat attributes and stats that decide their performance in battle. The stats are Strength, Intelligence, Dexterity, and Constitution. There are also stats that affect turn order in fights since it is a turn-based game. These are Speed, Vigor, and Initiative. 
and there are traits that affect the affinity of a character with certain weapons or classes. All of these can be upgraded when leveling up. There are also stats that are not improved by leveling up, but by doing them repeatedly. Some examples are crafting, blacksmithing, and lockpicking. Heroes also have skills they can use in fights. But unlike in other RPGs, the skills a hero have here are not decided by their job. The skill system in Guild Saga follows a school mechanic, where players can make their heroes learn skills from different schools to make unique builds for their character. The schools are Rogue, Cleric, Hunter, Warlock, Warrior, Hydromancer, Aeromancer, Geomancer, Pyromancer, and Engineer. This is a cool way of implementing skills because you can get creative with how your hero performs. You could build a warrior that can also heal itself with cleric skills, or even a hydromancer that also goes invisible with rogue skills. The possibilities are endless. Now that you know the attributes, I'll talk about the game modes. The game has three modes, story mode, PvE arena, and PvP. In story mode, players will follow a main storyline while exploring the open world. There will be interactions with NPCs, side quests, boss fights, and puzzle solving. The team says that the dialogue and narrative for Guild Saga was made with a lot of effort to make NPCs more interesting. There are even dialogue choices you can make while playing. You can choose between Intimidate, Intellect, and Inspire. Depending on your response, you can even unlock unique outcomes to storylines. This makes the story mode feel more alive. In single-player arena, you will have to fight against computer-controlled enemies that progressively become more difficult. In between matches, players can swap in or out units to make the best team, depending on the enemies they'll be facing. The further you get into this mode, the higher the rewards. And in PvP mode, you can compete against other players in a fight with both of you controlling four units. There will be a ranking ladder in PvP to provide fair matchmaking, and the higher your rank is, the better the rewards. There is also a guild system in the game where players can band together and complete guild-specific quests for more rewards. To form a guild, the founders need to pay a fee first. They can then customize the name, crest, banner, and even entry fee of the guild once it is up. The game is called Guild Saga, so this is pretty much a no-brainer. Like I said, the gameplay really feels like Final Fantasy Tactics or Tactics Ogre. And the devs even mentioned they really were inspired by those games. If you are familiar with those games, then this won't be new to you. There are a lot of factors to consider during combat in games like these, which makes them more fun because you really have to put a lot of thought in what you do. A few examples are status effects that can afflict your hero, terrain effects that can hinder movement or boost stats, and even the status of the battlefield like weather and time. And there are also magic barriers, damage types, and resistance levels each hero has that you all have to consider when making moves during combat. I can't go through it all one by one, since there really is a lot to think about in strategy games like this. But good job from the devs making the game so in-depth. I really see the amount of thought they put into this game. The storyline, the combat system, and the hero mechanics all feel alive and robust. Now let's get to the tokenomics. The game only has one token, called GGLD. It is the primary in-game token and will also be used for rewards. The use cases for GGLD are purchasing equipment, skills, consumables, and upgrading your hero. It is also used when crafting equipment and leveling up. You can earn GGLD by playing the game regardless of the mode. Although some modes will give higher rewards, such as getting further in the PvE arena or getting a higher rank in PvP. You can also earn it when staking. The devs are still drafting the tokenomics chart at the time of this recording, but I think they will release more info before the IDO. Speaking of the devs, they are anonymous right now and I believe there isn't any plan of them being doxxed anytime soon. Not necessarily a bad thing, but also not the best. Just think of that what you will. Overall, the game looks promising. I love the art they use for the NFTs and in-game graphics, and I'm pretty sure a lot of people are a fan of pixel art too. 
The gameplay is impressive and really feel like they put a lot of thought into the mechanics, combat, narrative and character design. It is an ambitious game to pull off, but if the devs do it right, this could really be a hit with players who love the genre. And on top of that, they even made it free to play. This will really help the game reach a larger player base, and since it is a strategy game, I don't think the rewards will plummet anytime soon, since it is skill-based. Good to see another play to earn game that actually rewards players with skill. And not just clicking games where you rely on luck and pray you win. Again, their NFTs will be minting on February 25th, so you can mark that on your calendars now. The mint price will be 1.5 sol per guild hero, regardless if you are whitelisted or not. Personally, I will be looking into getting a few for myself, since I am pretty bullish on this game. What do you think about Guild Saga? Are you looking to get some guild heroes of your own? Let me know in the comments. And if you want to talk more about other crypto games we're playing right now, you can join our Discord over at Survivors, where we have friendly people all willing to share their experiences. That's it for today. See you next video.